TikTok's notorious deleted videos by Fox the Kim Boy. <sighs> now, honestly, I don't know what to say. Let's just get into the video. She was being spied on as she took a huge steamy dump in an Airbnb bathroom. That's what- Okay, what is this intro? Pretty crazy? What the f*** was that intro? <laughs> what, like, genuinely, what was that? She was being spied on as she took a huge steamy dump in an Airbnb bathroom. That's what's thought to have happened to a TikToker by the name of Kennedy allegedly back in April of 2023. You see, Airbnb has had a little problem in the past when it comes to homeowners abusing their powers to spy on guests. I covered one of these incidents in my video about banned Airbnb users earlier this year. In this instance, that actually is a common thing though. Like if y'all go in a hotel, I guarantee some some dude has like a charger set up there or a light, and he's seen you naked. He's seen you naked. Walk out, bro. Walk out. It's your choice whether to like it or not. But it's definitely a true thing. Like they do that all the time. So the people that were staying at this Airbnb were in fact being spied on by a homeowner in Comfort Holy Texas. Planted hidden cameras and took two thousand pics and videos of guests having sex. My only, the only thing I'm surprised of is, damn, bro, 2,000 people is having sex, bro, in this Airbnb. Yo, see, that's why I can never, like, own property, especially, like, if it's, like, my house. I can never have my, <laughs> wrong button. I can never have my house as the Airbnb, because I know people would be in my bed. I know the the sheets would be, end, end up sticky, they would end up wet, dripping. I couldn't do that. Over 2,000 pictures of his guests in compromising positions, having set up a hidden camera, faced towards the main bed. Alarm bells were raised after the homeowner encouraged these guests to stand naked in a particular spot. Probably not the best way to seem innocent, but... <laughs> nah, 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 okay. I'm victim blaming here, bro. At off rip, if I went to anywhere and they told me immediately to stand in a single spot to get naked, bro? You think nothing's gonna ring off on my head? I'm either going, moving on to the next place, and I'm, and I'm stitching too, actually. I'm stitching, I'm doing both. Upon suspicion, a male guest at the Airbnb found the camera. Naturally, the authorities were called and the police found thousands of naked pictures of previous guests. This isn't an isolated incident either, as there have been several different versions of the same general story. Mm. And, well, you could say that a very similar, but perhaps even more interesting version of these events happened to a TikToker named Kennedy allegedly and her friends. According to The Independent, Kennedy was out with 14 of her friends to celebrate one of their birthdays staying near Vancouver, Canada, when one of her friends said that she felt as though they were being watched. Initially dismissive, Kennedy and her friends eventually decided to investigate, searching every nook and cranny of this house for the slightest sign of evidence, mm. and then they found it. As Kennedy explains, yeah, they found a very peculiar outlet that upon first glance seemed to be recording everything. There's outlets for this? The only thing I saw, the only camera I saw was like, the one I saw is they had a charger. The charger was a camera. And I know they do mirrors. Outlet? Yeah, I can't even blame them. I would have never got this. I legit would have never got this. As she says, she sends it off to the police to investigate it. And in the meantime, Kennedy makes this video. It blows up instantly, taking in a whopping 6.5 million views. News outlets then start picking up on the story, and Kennedy herself even goes on the news to tell her tale and to come out and spread this awareness, almost becoming oh the face God. of this sort of thing. No, no, see? Yeah, bro, I, I wouldn't notice this. I would not notice that. So many people are saying, like, now they're going to look out for this sort of thing and be more careful, which I'm glad I could help spread the word about that. But then something came to light that would blow this case wide open, because as it turns out, there was no camera. After all of that, huh? this was just an accidental hoax. The Sunshine Coast Royal Mountain Police confirmed that whilst this news outlet seemed like it was surely a fake, this wasn't the case. It was pointed towards the shower, it couldn't be used, and right there in the bottom, that looked like it was a camera, but at least according to a police investigation, that wasn't the case. This had just been a huge misunderstanding. The paranoid friend was just paranoid. 
the girls had gotten this one wrong. Kennedy had admitted to taking a Mondo Duke in front of 6.5 million people all for naught. There were of course no legal actions taken against the Airbnb owner because after all, they were innocent. So New why lie about it? I mean, I guess for views, I guess for views, but... That picked up on the story, had to provide updates, and of course, Kennedy had to take the video down as she had accused someone of doing something that they simply didn't do. Now, of course, this was just an accident. Really I don't think that Kennedy you? was trying to get the owner in trouble. She just jumped the gun a bit. Of course, this story shouldn't be a deterrent for people to search their Airbnbs just in case. But jumping to conclusions and posting these sorts of things before any legal conclusions have come out is obviously problematic too. But that's just one of the many deleted TikToks we're going to talk about today as we dive deep into this app, uncovering the worst that it has to offer. This is technically a part two to a video that I made about a month ago, a video that was deemed to be so offensive and vile that it was demonetized, so you already know it's going to be good. If you haven't seen that one yet, you can watch it before this one, or even- I would be mad, but me honestly, I would be paranoid and do this too. After if you yeah, want, no. it doesn't really matter the order. But with that said- I feel like in Airbnbs, you could probably set up like some cameras in the main area and then tell them just so like nobody steals shit. But like- Let's get right into it with a story about- Kinda did look like a camera, but at least cover it. Masculinity, betrayal, and backlash. Boy, this story cry. dates back to November 2021 cry. and involves a video that, if I'm not mistaken, is only 8 seconds in length. Told my husband to go outside and take a deep breath, deep breath and I caught him crying? Why are you posting this? Bro, oh my god. So yeah, we have no words, only 8 seconds, and all it is, is a video of this woman's husband crying Bro, out- you can tell he wants to be in private too. Bro, don't post that. No, any person that posts a video of them crying, like, legit, a video or photo of them crying- I still don't understand why niggas do that. <laughs> I haven't been seeing it as much, but it never made any sense to me at all. Aside, captioned, told my husband to go outside and take a big breath, this. and I caught him crying watery eye emoji, crying emoji. But despite its length and simplicity, it threw the internet into a frenzy because a lot of people felt as though this video was completely unwarranted. Many people disliked her terminology, particularly taking offence to the fact that she caught him crying. Many people also disliked that this video for the most part seems to be candid. It doesn't appear as though the husband knew anything about it, and so probably didn't have a say in the video being shot or uploaded. Obviously, the big overarching theme here is men expressing their emotions. Consent. A lot of men don't like to express vulnerable emotions to other people. A lot of men don't like to cry in front of other people, even if it's their closest loved ones, and so to force this on them to many people is wrong. Ask men to- No, I'm not gonna lie, that's so true, bro. Even me, like, oh my god. Like, be honest, y'all. Uh, all the guys in here. Could you post a video of yourself crying? Bro, with society, it's just the way society is. No, you can't. Like, any video you see of a, a dude, cry, influencer dude crying, there's always gonna be some niggas making fun of him, like, oh my god, grow up. Goddamn, grow up. For anything. It doesn't matter what it is, bro. Almost anything. I mean, there is times, there's different scenarios and stuff, but it's just, it's rough. A poll of males and found that 74% say that they cry in general, so one in four men claim not to cry at all, but only 55%, so just over half, said that they would cry in front of a woman. Most studies that I found claim that men tend to be just as emotional as women, but they just hide their emotions more. Many people theorize that this is a result of gendered conditioning from an early age. Many young males are told, boys don't cry. Many young boys think that it shows weakness, or it's emasculating, and though it's hard to argue that this behaviour is always healthy, at the end of the day, it's a person's choice whether or not they want to show or hide their emotions. Personally, unless I'm crying at a movie, I might cry half a dozen times a year. Like, if you put a movie in front of me, and it's a good movie, and it's got an emotional moment that's been well earned, and I'm just fully immersed- I only cry when I'm at my complete limit. The thing is, it's, it's different, right? So, like, bro, it's just, it's just it's just so different, because, like, people are so weird online, especially, even if I get emotional about something, let's say, like, something- Somebody close to me passes away or something, I get emotional, bro. I guarantee you there will still be niggas that come here talking about, Yo, why you crying, bro? Why you crying? Man the f*** up. Man the f*** up. 
Shut up, bitch. It's not that serious. It's not that serious. We don't care. We don't care. Post the video. Post the video. I guarantee, bro. I guarantee. And that's why I'm like, I cannot sit up here and then do some shit like that because it's just society. That's in the story. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll cry like a baby absolutely every day of the week. But in day to day life, it doesn't happen very right. much. Like, it's kind Should of a wrong. rarity. And then, even when it does happen, my eyes burn when I cry. I don't know if it's normal. I don't know if it's mm. like. If, if that's meant to happen, probably not. But like when I cry, it's like it's like a devil that's had holy water poured on it. It's just like my eyes burn. It's not good. And there are plenty of men out there who suppress their emotions way more than I do. This man, Sorry, though, man. seems like he can. And though there was a lot of backlash, of course, there was a fair amount of support, too. A few people were saying that these sorts of videos should just be out there on the Internet. At the end of the day, this is an authentic. Why? No. No, these sorts of videos should just be out there on these sorts of the internet. The videos recording random people crying without their consent? The hell? No. <laughs> some people just simply like to do things in private. Not just guys, too. Women, too, bro. There's some women that don't like to be emotional in front of people. Like, what the hell? At the end of the day, no. this is an authentic man doing something natural. These people argue that the only way for men to express their emotions more is just to normalize what is good it. about that? Nonetheless, the video was mostly received negatively, and after continuous backlash, Mrs. Gibson decided to take the video down. She and her husband then created a video responding to the criticism. We have a very, I think, unique relationship, and, it, and maybe not common, maybe not a common relationship, but we have an unbelievable amount of trust for each other. He looks like he was like, he, he was definitely forced to record this shit. <laughs> It looks like when you're a kid and you're forced to do an apology or something to the teacher. Like, <laughs> oh my so god. I trust Jackie, and I know her heart, and oh, I know that no. it was pure. Regardless, So it was definitely, like, without his consent. That's that's worse. That, that That's actually worse. The video would Holy stay down skin. forever more, and though Gibson would stick to her guns, later coming out to say that the critics were trolls, that they were obnoxious, that they were repulsive, even taking to Instagram, continuing to defend herself, this wouldn't change anything at all. But from a wife to a fiancé, for this next one, we're heading down under to Australia and heading back to January 2022 because that's when this story is set. The main character of this tale happened to be none other than a blushing bride-to-be named Maddie Smart, who had what some people described as a harebrained scheme to contract a highly infectious and deadly disease. I'm dancing with danger. I'm sure you're curious as to the backstory behind this peculiar decision, so it's time to explain. If you remember, I said that this story was set in January 2022, which happened to be the time that the COVID Omicron variant was really kicking up. Oh my god, wait, what happened to this, bro? Oh my god, bro, who would speedrun COVID? What happened to this Omicron? There was a certain point, I remember there was a certain point where there was like five COVID variants, and then the shit just disappeared and everybody forgot about it. I don't even know what happened. I think I got, I don't know which one I got. I think I got regular COVID. Each COVID variant, yeah. the virus became less and less deadly. By this point, many countries in the world were just kind of past- Had Omicron? How do you even detect that? I don't understand. Obviously, I, I can't speak COVID for Australia, existed. but over here in the UK, we had been back to normality for more than half a year now, but public opinion was still divided on whether we should be cautious or just get on with it. Hmm. If you take a look on worldometers, you can see that this wave was by far the most infectious, but deaths had peaked a year prior. I'm sure you can remember, this was two years on from the initial outbreak. People had sacrificed a large portion of their lives to this. Obviously, with infections at an all-time high, many people knew that they were there. likely going to get it. And that's where Maddie comes in, because she was due to be wed in six weeks. And Australia had just announced that they would be temporarily shutting down indoor dance floors to try and curb the growth of this new wave. Maddie gambled that if she were to catch COVID prior to her wedding, she'd be able to go through with the event relatively unscathed. And so, she went out to a nightclub right before they closed with the sole purpose of trying to get infected with a disease that is said to have killed almost 7 million people. 
And so, right before nightclubs were supposed to close their doors to the public, she decided to head over to one and throw it back once more for the road. She can be seen clearly breaking social distance, getting in extremely close proximity to several men, and even taking a sip of one man. Wait, what did it? Let me rewind this. Getting in extremely clo close. I need to rewind proximity. this because what did, what did that text say? POV, your wedding's in six weeks and you still haven't had COVID. Clearly breaking so social distance. Getting in extremely nah, she's talking to a bunch of other niggas too. Extremely close proximity to several men and even taking See, what is that thing they have in weddings where it's like y'all know what I'm talking about in weddings they have the boys thing and then the girls thing, like the women do one thing and then the men do that thing. I swear bro, that's not gonna happen. I, I, that, that is not gonna happen with my wife. Like in any it can't be in any type of club. It can't be in any type of, of plate like public place with a bunch of guys like that. That just can't happen. Best man and I forgot no not best man. It's party. Something some type of party. I forgot the name of it. Some type of party. Ba I think it's the bachelor's is it the bachelor's party party? I don't I don't I don't remember. A sip of one man's drink. She decided to upload this video of her clearly trying to catch COVID up to TikTok, and that's when it began to blow up, taking in a hundred and twenty-one thousand views. And if you look up her TikTok account, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise. She made a number of videos in late 2021 and early 2022 where she seemed fed up with COVID's rules and regulations. The interesting thing here is that the reception to this TikTok was generally divided. Many people who were against COVID lockdowns threw her their support, as well as a few mm. brides to be who could understand her rationale. On the other hand, there were a few people who came out to criticize her, with one user saying, sucks to be a healthcare worker watching this. Many people also pointed out a fatal flaw in Maddie's plan, which was that Omicron seemed to be a variant that people could catch several times. It could be that she caught it, and then prior to her wedding, caught it once more. That said, I think I could understand that if she had a bunch of non-refundable deposits, that she would probably take the risk. I only eloped my ex-wife Samantha, meaning that she beast never got married, so I don't exactly know the ins and outs of it, so perhaps someone that does know weddings and stuff, someone that has been married, could let me know down in the comments if this was a smart move. A lot of people tend to say that wedding brain makes you a bit loopy. People wanting their special day to be perfect might make them do extreme things. And again, okay, she not like that. That's like that's a different type of extreme. <laughs> you can't even compare that. That doesn't even compare. We did receive some support for this. Though, of course, as I've already mentioned, she did receive some backlash, and so a short while later, it seems as though Maddie deleted her video. It's not up on TikTok anymore. That said, it could have been TikTok that deleted it, trying to snuff out this sort of thing, but bottom line, this video has since been deleted from the app. But that was nothing compared to our next story. Allow me to turn your attention to the skincare brand Biore, who back in May of 2023 committed one of the biggest marketing blunders of the modern age after they created a TikTok, fully intending on getting people to buy their product by heavily referencing a shooting. What? Your shoots at shot. Obviously, a content warning here, guys. This is a heavy subject, and though nothing is like this, has got to be. They gotta have the worst PR manager to ever exist. Worst PR manager, manager, marketing team. I don't know what they got. Going to be shown, and nothing too specific about the tragedy is going to be discussed here. We need to talk about this, okay? So this is Celia Max Brown, who in February of 2023 was supposedly on campus during the Michigan State University shooting, which resulted in the death of four people, including the perpetrator. It was a horrible tragedy, and it breaks my heart. But this sort of thing should absolutely never be normalized in any way whatsoever. Despite how common these Speed sorts of things have bit. been in the last couple of years, we should never accept it as just one of those things. Flash forward to May, and Biore would come out with an advertisement that would change everything. From countless obstacles that made us here, from a school shooting to having no idea what life is going to look like after college. Support of Mental Health Awareness Month, I'm partnering with Biore Skincare to strip away the stigma of anxiety. We want you to get it all out. Not only what's in your pores, but most importantly, what's on your mind too. Anxiety in my life is- <sighs> Yeah, this is terrible. This had to have gone through a marketing team. This went through, oh my God, how many people did this go through for this to just go through? And I don't even blame the girl because she was trying to get a bag. You know what, bro? Hustle your bag. I don't care. She can get her bag however much she wants to. These people on this market, I don't know what they would think would happen. This, come in waves. I this just goes to show like a lot of companies would be like, oh, we care about mental health, this and that. They don't give a f bro. I'm telling y'all, they don't give a f bro. They don't give a f 
brother shit. I've recently struggling from seeing the effects of gun violence firsthand. I've had to intentionally set aside time for prioritizing my mental health. I will never forget the feeling of terror that I had walking around campus for weeks in a place I considered home, with countless anxiety attacks to crying alone in my room at night. My message to you guys is that it's okay not to have it all together. Like and I guarantee they wrote that script too. They wrote the script. They were sitting there, they were like, ooh, make sure it's like, hmm. Let's make sure, okay, let's include anxiety attacks. You know, the kids, kids talk about that. Let's include the... Oh, you're walking around the school with anxiety. Anxiety. Okay, okay. What's another buzzword? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. This is ridiculous. Continually changes and your thoughts will too. Do things that make you happy and know well, everything will work itself out. This is 100% you definitely got a hundred percent. Definitely got Be all right. Actually made this. And it's tough to find words to describe just how tasteless a lot of the internet found this to be. Many people were asking, what kind of late stage capitalism BS is this? Commercializing this incident. How was that? Like that was some face acne product. How was that gonna? help your sales like a school shooting bro school shooting seriously i mean in part one of this video i pointed out the jack wright jeffrey dahmer cosplay which many people thought was insensitive in a very recent video i discussed the halloween cheese cemetery mukbang which a lot of people thought was insensitive this is worse than both of them surely it normalizes these sorts of tragedies it's discussed in such a nonchalant way it makes it seem like they're just a part of everyday life and perhaps worst of all it tries to make bank off them this partnership mm. was made only three months after the tragedy and i kid you not it's almost funny like, I wouldn't even be surprised if I saw someone laugh at this just because of the absurd juxtaposition between Seely describing her panic attacks and anxiety and her shilling this product. It reminds me of the time after the war in Ukraine broke out and CNN accidentally aired the Applebee's adverts. But anyway, the video- Wait, what? The video came when the war in Ukraine broke out and CNN accidentally aired the Applebee's ad What is this? Adverts. But anyway, the video came out- Hold on, let me search this up. I never seen that. Russia invades Ukraine sponsored by Applebee's. <laughs> cowboy shake that, that that just tops it off they had the cowboy shaking ass in that they made sure to throw that in Applebee. i mean hey it's a good deal it was a good deal it's a good deal crazy ad placement it's a good deal why is this so funny don't they i feel like this happens more though right like on breaking news because the news makes their money from ads and stuff so it makes sense they do this out, but it wouldn't last for very long WTF? because within 24 hours of it going up, there was, as you might expect, instant backlash. People were not happy with this partnership. The video was, of course, deleted soon after, but this is the internet, and a Twitter user by the name of Thomas had downloaded it, re-uploading it to his account, where it would be seen by five and a half million people. Hmm. Needless to say that Twitter went in on it. Advertising is all about connecting with the common human experience, and shootings are now one of them. This is so dystopian. This is dark. But not as dark as the blackheads this new Biore strip removed from my T-Zone. This was obviously a media disaster for Biore, who came out on Instagram to apologize, stating, We did it the wrong way. We lacked sensitivity around an incredibly serious tragedy, and our tonality was completely inappropriate. They added, We are committed to continuing our mental health mission, but we promise to do it in a better way. And See the way to do that is making sure to buy B B B Biore Rock product. Biore Rock product. Make sure you buy your next Biore product. You know, the next uh, school shooting will be sponsored by Biora, so... Or what was their name? I forgot, actually. I don't remember. I don't Lee Max Brown also came out with an apology of her own, but by this point, the damage had been done. And speaking of damage done, a video about deleted TikToks wouldn't be complete without perhaps the most infamous Better one of all time. This next Dallas story was supposed to be in part one, but I had to cut it due to time reasons. Let's talk about that Howie Mandel TikTok. Oh my god, I know about this. Oh my god. Oh, this is, oh, I remember when this came out too, bro. My friend sent me this. My friend sent me this. It's if you know, you know. He's gonna explain it. Just a heads up, this part of the video is going to be very heavily censored. I cannot stress that enough. Part one of this video, as I've already mentioned, was demonetized. I really don't want to have this part demonetized as well. If you know what happened here, you know. If you oh, want man, to find no, out for yourself, you can now. look it up. I wouldn't advise it, but you can. If you don't know, allow me to indulge you in the story of Howie Mandel's wildest TikTok. So if you don't know Howie Mandel, he's an incredibly successful Canadian television personality and comedian. He voiced Gizmo in Gremlins, he was the judge on America's Got Talent, and in July 2022, he uploaded a TikTok that went viral. This TikTok was him stitched over a prolapsed anus. For as much as I wish you could share in the pain that I had to go through seeing this, unless I want to make- Bro, I don't know what a prolapsed anus is. It's pretty much like, like imagine your asshole and it's just outside. Like that was the image. I didn't even know what that was. I had to research when 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 i saw it i had to research what it is but imagine your whole asshole just fell out pretty much like all of it just fell out and that's what it is 
and this month I cannot show you the full shot. In case you're wondering what a prolapse anus is, and I'm no doctor so please allow me to consult my script here, I wrote, it's when everything falls out of your ass. That's it. You, it's it's like everything. I told you, bro. I'm right. I told you, I'm right. I saw it. I, saw, I had to research into it. Thumbs out. This dude. You had to research. Yes, I had to research, dumbass. I had to research to figure out what the fuck I was looking at because that shit was so traumatizing, bro. That's why. Posted a picture of a guy with his insides falling out of his ass, saying that his friend Neil bent over, and this is what happened. And then he said he wanted to know if anyone knew if it was COVID related. When my friend Neil bent over, this happened. Does somebody know? Is this COVID related? And if it is. What do we do about it? Ow. Clearly it wasn't, but Mr. Mandel didn't know that. In an interview with Anthony Padilla, Mandel said that he posted the video and then went to bed, not thinking much of it. <laughs> Whilst he was asleep, he was called up by his son who asked what he Even did. Even guts from your stomach? Yeah, I don't want to talk about this anymore, guys. So please go ahead and keep talking about it in the chat. He looks at social media to find out that he's trending on Twitter and that people were quite understandably shocked and bewildered at what they had seen. I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that it was a prolapse. <laughs> what did you think it was? I didn't know. It was a guy with the orange pa red pants and the, this big pink fleshy I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I didn't know there's a I didn't even know there was such a thing as a prolapse. It's possible like said, for this to happen like randomly? Uh, that's not true, right? Are you talking about I could just walk on the street and like it's gonna happen to me? I don't even want to look into and it. Neil uh, found this on the back of his pants. Is this COVID related? Ow. <laughs> and that's why I said it. And I put that up. And then I went to sleep. <laughs> and about an hour later, my uh, my son calls me Alex and goes, what did you do? I go, what do you mean what did I do? I'm sleeping. He goes, what did you post? I said, I posted a funny, uh, weird, look like a gross thing on the back of a guy. <laughs> he said, take it down. And I went, oh, okay. And I took it down and he goes, you're trending worldwide on Twitter. <laughs> so there was like, I, and I had it up for an hour and I think it had hit 20 million clicks. I didn't know I was sleeping. I don't even know if it's allowed up there in the first place. This kind of thing is definitely not advertiser friendly, but somehow Mr. Mandel got it up there. And the crazy thing is y'all, TikTok's like, TikTok's community, mods, whatever, so f***ed up. Since he's verified, he could leave the post up for like five hours and they wouldn't check it. But when I would post on TikTok, they would immediately take my shit down for no reason. That's how, that's how f***ed up TikTok's hierarchy is. It's so weird. For obvious reasons, he took it down as soon as he was privy to the knowledge of what this was, but by this point, apparently many of his sponsors had already pulled away. Despite it being a PR nightmare, this was an honest mistake. At least Mandel claims it was, but it had a disastrous impact. Fortunately for Mandel, he was later able to capitalize on the situation. <laughs> hold up, hold up. But it had a disastrous impact. This Fortun man, this same year, this is the same man that posted a, a man's anus falling out. Falling out, and he's had the Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I don't know why that's so hilarious. Fortunately for Mandel, he was later able that's to capitalize on the situation, moment. releasing some merch referencing the now deleted Kids TikTok. Choice is still Will around? we ever see a TikTok blunder bigger than this? I'm not sure, but man, is it funny. But from the infamous to the famous, our next story concerns Teo Cruz. You might know him as the man behind such hits as Dynamite, as Break Dynamite, Your Hearts, yeah. and Hangover, with the now 43 year old having been a household. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Captain Sparkle's version better. ...name in the early 2010s. Flash forward a decade later though, and Teo Cruz would join TikTok, but his time on the app was short-lived. And if you go to search for his old account now, it's nowhere to be found. So, where did it go? Let's get to the bottom of this mystery. Hmm. If you aren't familiar with his music, Teo Cruz's biggest hits, Dynamite, Break Your Hearts, and Hangover, were all released in the two years between late 2009 and late 2011. It's fair to say that with three big hits under his name, which to this day have a combined total of almost 2 billion streams on Spotify, Teo Cruz was, at a point in time, a very big name in the music world. But when was the last time you heard any of his music? Unfortunately, after these big hits, Teo Cruz found it difficult to follow up on them, and yeah, for years I'm after, lie, his music career off. was in a downward spiral. If you take a look on Spotify, his most recent releases Damn. have only hundreds of thousands Damn. of streams, a far cry from the hundreds of millions that he was getting before. So 10 years later, when Teo Cruz makes his TikTok account, people were quick to remind him that they think that he's fallen off. According to Cruz, people were relentless he in their hate off. towards him, which took a toll on his mental health. At the end of the day, at least in terms of his music career, it's near impossible that Cruz will ever see the heights that he achieved during his peak. His career has surely seen its best days, and to be reminded that you're a has-been or that your life has peaked, to be told that you've already offered the world's best that you have to offer 10 years ago, one could make the argument that it's understandable that this took a toll on Cruz's mental health. Cruz described this like an ambush. He described it as toxic, he described it as mob mentality, and he also said in a now deleted Twitter post that he had even had thoughts of the worst. Cruz mm. said that social media apps need more regulations to stop this kind of negative feedback loop from damaging people's mental health, and also admitted that he's not exactly the biggest fan of fame. He said that though the rest of the world might- Yeah, bro, the, your best solution is just don't look at social media. 
Bro, if you do anything online, any con any type of thing, people are just gonna say shit. Think that he's fallen off. He Poor doesn't guy. see it like that. Kind of Let's be honest guy. with ourselves. Famous fleeting. Even the largest performers only realistically have a few years at the top. Most of the biggest artists in the world won't be there in 10 years, maybe not even mm. five. At the very least, they likely won't maintain their popularity. They'll be a decade older, their music will likely change, people will get bored of them, and the next generation will likely find other performers that they prefer. The same thing applies to YouTubers. Take a look back to 2013, and very few of the largest creators are still making videos. Even fewer are still as relevant now as they were back then. In 10 years time, I'm sure that my career on YouTube would have already peaked. I might be Damn. a long stored memory in your mind, or perhaps I'll just be forgotten. Damn, y'all think I, uh, y'all think I've peaked already? No, I haven't peaked, bro. I haven't peaked. I don't even like that energy, bro. Like, like, come on now. About entirely. But 20. if you want something else to remember me by, why not check out my video on banned Airbnb users? I mentioned it earlier, but honestly, it's one of my favorite videos up on the channel. I hope you enjoy no, no, no. it as okay, much as good. I do, and I also. Alright, good video, good video. I'm gonna like it. No, no, no. Tom, we keep going. See, this is why I like this. This is why I like y'all, bro. Energy, like we're locked in like this. If I, I'm not gonna lie. If I saw a single person say yes, I would have banned them though. I would have banned them because that's that's how I how I do. Keep it pushing, little bud. Who you calling little bud? You know what? <sighs> whatever, whatever, y'all. Positive energy over here. Um, yeah, crazy video.